Welcome back, and if you've been enjoying this panel for tutorial series designed to increase your digital art skills, you'll remember how last week I took these three artworks and transformed them into these bad boys right here. Now, I've got something really special for you this week because I'm gonna take these two artworks and you won't believe what I do to them. We are gonna go over everything, anatomy, posing, lighting, composition, and yes, of course, your backgrounds too. So make sure you watch this tutorial all the way through so that you can be a better digital artist by the time you're done with it, because we are starting right now. So we are starting off strong today with this lovely illustration from Philippe Schwartz. And this immediately appealed to me because I am a huge Lord of the Rings fan. So thank you so much for giving me this one to paint over today. Philippe tells me about this piece that it is an atmospheric piece about a hobbit getting ready to adventure. Now, and Philippe asked me, what do they need to do to push it to the next level? And they want to make this look more professional. Well, you definitely came to the right place for that. There's something going on with what this Hobbit is doing. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I do want to bring that out and I want to give this kind of a next level look at this. So as you take a look at these proportions right here, you're going to notice how it is pretty much structured just like a general adult. However, though, Hobbits don't have that. So what I want you to see between the differences here is what it is and what it's going to be. So what you're going to see me do here is I want to overall increase, especially for somebody that's supposed to have these type of proportions, is I want to increase the overall head size of it so that it is bigger than the body as it naturally would be on an adult figure. And then I'm going to also size down and select the main body just to make it look a little bit more childlike because that is sort of the general proportion for a hobbit. Looking at the silhouette of the figure here, what I want you to notice is that there is a vast amount of space all around the figure. Instead of the figure taking up the majority of the composition, he's actually a very small minority of. So what I want to do is I very quickly just want to go ahead and I want to grab him and I recommend that you always make your characters be large and in charge in your scenes, especially on a really emotional scene like this, because otherwise we're not gonna be able to see their face, we're not gonna be able to tell their expression, and we do want that storytelling narrative component to be really large and in charge. There we go, so much better, right? Look at how much bigger this person is. Let's move into now the face, and the face is gonna be one of the most integral parts of your illustration, friends, especially on this one right here, because I definitely get the sense that there's some type of somber mood happening with this character, that it contrasts with this bright background that's happening here. So this is something that I definitely would want to bring out and you would want to bring out more in your close-up shots like this. So overall, when I take a look at this face here, I definitely know we can do better. Moving to the face, y'all, what I really want to get is this kind of pained, anguish feeling about him. Something that, like, he's in the middle of writing a goodbye letter to somebody that he loves. He's leaving a note that he's running away. Maybe he has to flee from some threat that's happening to him. But yes, I do want to bring that. And you're also going to notice me bring a lot more contrast into the face. I'm going to also... This is a big thing too, y'all. You wanna make sure that when you have a backlit scene just like this, the face should not be bright and lit. It should be in a lot of cooler tones because if it's really hot behind them, you wanna bring more contrast into the face by using more cool tones just like this. Now I'm feeling a lot more from this scene now that that's done. And yeah, you can obviously see I didn't do anything to the hair, but don't worry about that, friends. We're coming back to that. I feel like right now as I look at these arms that they're a little limp and I think that we can bring a lot more expression into them. And also too, I wanna to bring a lot more contrast and I wanna bring a lot more cool tones into the outfit, just like I did with the face. So let me show you how to do that. I wanna make this character again, matching the face. I want him to look like he is pained and he is anguished on this scene. Because overall with this, before I felt like he was just laying his hands down, which didn't really sell it as powerfully as I think it could. So I wanted him to look like he was grasping onto the table. Like this is a really powerful moment for him. Like he is really saddened to have to flee from his homeland or run away from his family or something like that. So with that too, you're also gonna notice me again, continuing to bring in a lot more cool tones. I'm gonna also refine a lot of the folding that's happening on this. I'm gonna correct a couple anatomical issues with this as well. And I am gonna bring more adult-like proportions to him where before he was very thin and I'm gonna bring him into a slightly more husky build. Now as I move into the background, one of the things that I really love about all the Hobbit houses, especially Bilbo Baggins house, is that huge window, those big rounded windows that they have. And I think that's a really important structural element that I wanna bring more into this because without that, you don't really have a good sense of scale to compare his overall proportions against to understand how small he is. So I definitely wanna bring that more large and in charge. With this now, what I wanna do is I just wanna kinda of go over that whole area and I wanna give it a 
the general sense of light like you see me doing right now. Let's bring that window into it. Uh, you could go ahead and straight up draw that, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna photo bash it in. A real key point for you to think about if you're ever going to photo bash, my friends, is this, is that number one, you need to have some type of underpainting happening there for so that it has something nice to blend into. And then number two is you're shifting through all of your different color blending modes. You want something that's not going to make the photo texture that you're putting into your artwork to look like it stands out too much against the actual character. If you want some more tips on how to do this, I actually did this in the first video in this series, so go check that out. Link down below too. So now let's shift our attention to the foreground, my friends. Like for example, when I look at that bag, that bag is pretty simple, it's pretty basic. And if we want to, again, thrust our viewer into a more fantasy setting, there's a lot more that we could do to that bag. So big time on this bag, I wanna go ahead, I wanna add things like additional pockets onto it. I wanna make sure that I add like a sleeping bag. Like I wanna give the sense that this person is running away, they have some problem, and they might not be coming back for a long time or they're going for a very, very long journey for some reason. You need to make sure that whether it's a character or whether it's an item, whatever it's gonna be, it needs to be really emphasized through what you're painting, through the colors, through the lights, through the complexities of it, so that it directs your eye to it. Because in this scene, there are two main emphasis points. The focal points of this image are always gonna be the bag and the Hobbit itself. This way it kind of tells that visual narrative as far as what's going to happen and you can surmise what's going to take place afterwards. So now, looking at this guy, man, I'm so much happier with this. But we still got a little bit to do. I just wanna bring a little bit more emphasis to some of my already existing elements. As well, too, I wanna increase the lighting effects on The Hobbit, on the table. I wanna make sure, too, that I bring some cooler zones, some blues into a lot of the shadows. I wanted to make sure that that cast shadow that's coming off of The Hobbit onto the table is gonna be something that contrasts dramatically against the background. Because you wanna make sure that you always check your contrast and emphasis points just like I'm producing right here. If you don't have enough contrast, friends, then in your illustrations, everything's just going to look flat. Now, as a last and final check, my friends, one thing I would definitely recommend that you do very heavily is you should definitely check your image, what it looks like in black and white. This is how you can assess your values. All right, Philippe, so you asked what you need to do to make it next level. Here's your original and boom, here it is now. Hope you learned so much about how to increase your illustrations. Thank you so much, Philippe, for allowing me this opportunity to paint over your work. Hey, if you're getting great value out of this and you want more of it, my friends, let me tell you about my art mentorship. So this is my private coaching system. So if you're tired of lame tutorials that you can't ask questions to, if you're tired of courses that are unspecific and untailored, if you're tired of being a part of an art class where you just blend into the crowd, this is for you. This is where you have the opportunity to work directly, yes, with me individually, one-on-one, -on -one, in order to tailor a curriculum that's going to bring out the best in you and your art, then definitely make sure you check out and fill out the form down in the description here because I am very excited at the idea of working with you. So don't delay, fill it out today. All right, y'all, let's hop into picture number two coming from Alex Kalevsky, which gives me, boom, this awesome Dark Souls character. Now, I have to admit, y'all, I did not know this character because I haven't played anything past Dark Souls 2, so I actually had to look it up. So when I asked Alex about this, they told me that this is the Dark Souls character, Creighton the Wanderer, and Alex is specifically wanting help with the fact that they feel that he looks like a cardboard cutout. All right, so overall with this image, I like its overall look and appeal. However, though, I definitely see where we can push this next level. Let's do this. So when I take a look at this character, the first thing I want to address is the overall posing of it. There's something that's really stiff about this character, and here's what I'm seeing, is that first and foremost, when we look at the top body, the fact that his shoulder is not quite looking connected to his body and overlapping his face, as well as the back arm is a little too foreshortened uh, and dwarfed is a problem to me. And then also when I look at the, the legs, this character looks very off balance because when I look at where the knees are, there's two bends happening there and that really can't happen. Like this character would be uh, swinging a sword with a very weak stance as opposed to a very strong stance. And let me just show you what I wanna do. I wanna bring a much stronger pose onto this character. So let's do this. Now what I'm gonna do here is just like a psychopath would, I am going to slice and chop up this character with my lasso tool here and fill in some extra parts just to show you what the new potential is going to be. Because I want this character to look like they're overall going to really swing and 
ax, that big, huge ax, and I want them to look like they're about to come after us too. And with this pose, I'm going to elongate that front leg a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit more straight because I want it to suggest and show how there's going to be a lot of power coming from that swing, which you would naturally be able to produce because that is a huge flipping ax. All right, now this is definitely a much stronger looking pose. Let's move on to the next element in this. Now the next element I definitely wanna tackle here is gonna be that ax. So with its new hand placement, as you can see, this ax is not gonna quite fit in there. I wanna bring a little bit more perspective to this and I also wanna shift the direction because when I look at this blade, how it's looking straight up, it wouldn't do that and naturally, like in this perspective, it's gonna to need to be shifted. This now looks like it fits into the scene a lot better. So now my next element is gonna be the cape. So when I take a look at how the cape was initially here, it looks just very flat, but I wanna bring a lot more dynamicism into it. And this is where I tend to have a lot of fun with fantasy character. So in this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring a lot more dynamics into that cape, kind of make it look like it's being windblown. I wanna bring a lot more folds into it. And yes, I love how kind of when I look at different references of this character, it's very kind of cut up and torn and ragged, like a lot of Dark Souls characters are. I think it's gonna be a really great element to it. So I'm really excited with what I do here. You can now see what it's gonna transform itself into. So here now you can see that there is a lot more dynamic action. So use compositional elements just like this in order to help strengthen that component. Now let's go ahead and move on to the foreground of this because the character right now, I'm gonna be honest with you, it looks very ambiguous. Like I get the fact that this is a smoky environment, but I can't really understand what he is standing on. Like, is he levitating right now? It's very unclear. So let me show you how you can handle this. All right, so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nicely define out and carve out where exactly this foreground is. Now, big thing you wanna remember y'all is that your foreground should be kind of the darkest parts of your overall background whenever you're placing a character in. To it. And I'm going to carve out and under, help you understand exactly what type of materials this is made out of, what it looks like as well. And this is overall going to help bring some sense of purpose and identification as far as how this character exists. Because you, again, you want to show, is this character flying? Is it standing? Is it hovering? And that's really important to the scene. Now I'm feeling like this character is a lot more grounded. You can see how I've disguised the feet as well so that I didn't have to do it either. In the background here, I understand how it should, because of atmosphere perspective, it should be lighter and it should definitely not have as many hard edges as the foreground. It makes sense. However, though, with this, I think that there could be better identification to it. And I think that we can use some of the elements in the background to help to push our character forward through contrast. So let me show you what I'm gonna do with that. So now with the background here, everybody, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start with overlaying some actual gameplay photos of this area. And I think that's gonna allow me to go ahead and bring some more emphasis to this area of the image. And then I'm also going to allow that to contrast against the character because you're gonna see how some of those really brightly lit, like kind of teal areas of the artwork are going to push the more muted and darker tones of Creighton here more forward. What you always wanna do is you wanna add some type of blur effect to it. So for me, I'm gonna add a little bit of a motion blur to this. This tends to be a really nice way that you can do it so that again, it just doesn't look like it is going to be something that you just slapped in there. Because if you make your background images look like they're just a photo, then it looks super amateur and you don't wanna do that. So looking at this now, I am feeling this very much and I hope you are too. So overall with this character, you know, I think that he's missing a really strong light source. And as I really study this image, we have light sources coming from a few different directions, which makes it confusing. So I wanna correct that. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a more unified light source from this. And I also wanna use that, by the way, to bring some more contrast and emphasis onto this character. Because again, in an illustration, you need to direct the eye. And lighting is one of the best elements that you can do that with, just like you see me doing right here. I'm definitely feeling this more. And let's add some final stuffs into this. Now, as you watch me finish this one up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just focus on all the details. One of the big things I wanna do is I wanna bring in some more of the actual clothing elements that are in the character from the game based on references that I'm looking at right now while I'm painting this. And big time too here, y'all, I wanna talk to you about how to make some of your more common elements like belts or buckles or even just like 
any type of armor, you want to make it look more complex. You need to make additional, like for belts, you want stitch lines. For any type of armor, especially with this type of character in Dark Souls, you want to make it look like it's uneven and it's been chipped, it's been worn, it's been dented, it's been in battle. And there, if you want a full-on tutorial about how you can do this, definitely let me know about it down below in the comments. All right, Alex, let's check this out. Here's where you started and boom, here's where we are now. Hey, let me know what you think of this down below here because I love to hear y'all's reaction. Alex, I hope that you learned a lot about how you can take your artwork to the next level and I hope everybody here did too. So y'all, if you love this right here and you want to see more of it so that you can improve your digital art skills, make sure you watch this video right